Welcome everyone, it's Carolyn Moore from Modern Widows Club. And today we have a special guest, um, Rosalind Orwa and Francis Cooley. Both are from Kenya, Africa. And I just wanna introduce Miss Rosalind and then Rosalind is going to actually introduce uh, Mr. Cooley. So Rosalind, hello Rosalind. Hi, Rosalind <laughs> is a widow's rights champion. Uh, she actually founded and is the director of Rona Foundation, supports the rights of widows around Kenya. She, um, I began mentoring her about seven years ago, just because we met on Facebook and it's kind of grown from that. She's a grassroots widow leader and a mentor whose work has been replicated. She's a global leader uh, with Modern Widows Club and has worked in both the county and state and consulted with global civil organizations on widows' rights. You hear us talk about that a lot here at Modern Widows mm -hmm. Club. She has been appointed uh, the commissioned expert with the Ministry of Labor and Social Services in Kenya. Rosalind is a childless mother, but <laughs> she has 26 orphan children and runs a community center that supports widows and orphans. She is a lifelong fellow of the Atlantic Social, Economic and Equity Program at the London School of Economics for Social and Economic Equity. And she is an Aspen 2021 Fellow. In 2019, she was awarded our Modern Widows Club Legendary Widow mm -hmm. recipient. And we got to meet in Nashville two years mm -hmm. ago in person after all the years of being long distance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was really special. Um, Modern Widows Club partners with Rona uh, we have a sewing program with her and we have long uh, been helping widows mm -hmm. in Kenya and someday I hope to visit. So welcome, mm -hmm. Rosalind. Thank you so much, Caroline. It's a pleasure to finally get to talk to you on, you know, we've had interviews before, but not this way. So it's a pleasure That's to right. be here. And I, I want to introduce uh, the county police commandant, Kisi County, was formerly a county police commandant, Sia County, my friend, a mentor. And a widow champion, uh, commissioner of police, Francisco Oli, is the police commandant in Aokisi County, is a peace builder, a social change agent, and the founder of Peace Ambassador Kenya, which is a, an organization with um, over 5,000 peace ambassadors that he founded, but now has left in the hands of other young people to run. Mm -hmm. He's passionate about community policing, that I can agree completely. You text him on a case and he's on it. He's a peace builder and a responsible youth citizenry. And I love how he also does this, uh, going on Facebook to educate uh, you know, young people and uh, you, men generally on women rights issues. He's received a, a KNBTS Mobilizer of the Year Award and a Government Medal Award, which is like the highest government recognition in Kenya. He's a Peace Award for National Peace Building and two distinguished awards for exemplary community work. So he's a, you are a celebrated man, sir. He's an independent from IPOA, Independent Policing Unit. So uh, we welcome you to uh, this platform from Modern Widows Club, and it's an honor and pleasure to welcome you to this discussion. Welcome. Oh, oh, we lost it. We lost, we lost him again. Him. Okay, so we are just gonna, um, we were gonna just ask him about his background and how mm. he became a peace builder and change maker. Yeah. So mm. we'll wait till he gets back on. But Rosalind, how did you actually meet uh, Commissioner Cooley? It's interesting how when you have worked in our community for some time, then you get to know the right people. And then for a very long time, those opportunities to meet the right champions, the right leaders was not present because a number of doors were locked. You know, they look open even government offices, but they are locked. So at one point we got a partnership with the Kenya Scouting Association, which is a, is a commissioner of scouts himself, Mr. Francisco Oli. And our male champion with the Scouting Commission, and we had this program of creating male champions to protect and defend widow rights in various villages. Mm -hmm. So uh, Maurice Odindo, who's a, a county also a Scouts Commissioner, they worked together and knew him. And mm -hmm. so when Maurice attended one of our activities, uh, a male champion himself said, 
have you met uh, the police commandant? I said, uh, we've gone to their office several times and it's been impossible. So this door was opened by another male champion. Mm -hmm. And he came to one of our widow activities, what we call a widow's cafe. It's a small group of widows who meet together under a tree or in a hall or in a church. And then we call the male champions to listen to them and, and educate them. So right. he was our chief educator that day. And by the time he was done, and he covered all the widow issues, he covered the life skills, how do you rebuild back? And one of the lines he used in that meeting that caught my eye was, a widow is just a name. You can grow beyond that name. And so when he said that, I'm like, oh, and then he shared the story. I was raised by a widow mother and my mother became the sole oh, person oh. that made me grow into a, you know, a position of leadership. And I was like, this sounds like authentic leadership. This sounds yeah, yeah. like somebody who understands the issue. And then immediately I started following with him and began to invite him to our activities. Right. So because he had a widowed mother, he had a personal experience with it. And that's what we're actually really starting to find in our mm -hmm. in either in our uh, the men who champion widows mm -hmm. and widows causes and rights. Mm -hmm. They either have become widowed themselves mm -hmm. or they were raised by a grandmother or a mother mm -hmm. who was widowed. Mm -hmm. And they have this deep respect for mm -hmm. these women and their journeys, mm -hmm. and their, their unique challenges, right? Because mm -hmm. they're getting a front row um, mm -hmm. experience of watching their mothers. And so when he was on the call earlier, hopefully he's gonna pop back on, we, we, he was saying how honored he was to be on mm -hmm. a call with such strong mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. And he knows that, you know, mm -hmm. directly and personally. And that's mm -hmm. probably over the years has really just said, this is what you know, I want to become that peace builder and that bridge, mm -hmm. really a bridge builder in it. And that's what mm -hmm. creates change makers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They see where there's injustices and then they insert themselves into that mm -hmm. cause and they make a difference and they create the change. And that, mm -hmm. that is definitely what you told me is really mm -hmm. what's happened here. What, what I think that is, um, you know, I am constantly looking for mm -hmm. male champions in the United States, right? It, this mm -hmm. is not a unique issue that not mm -hmm. enough men are standing up for widows. But I mm -hmm. think in Kenya, it's even more so important because mm -hmm. we're talking about women who it could be between life and death. Um, whereas in the United States, there are laws, there are mm -hmm. certain social systems in place that mm -hmm. um, we have that, that you don't have. So the role of men stepping forward and being mm -hmm. these champions is truly a, a critical, I think, and, and vital. And that's mm -hmm. why we thought having this interview would be really valuable. Um, You're right. We are in a patriarchal society. We live in a, first it's culturalized, then it is patriarchal. And then women, especially when you're widowed, you are invisible. You're supposed to grow small and disappear. Right, right. So and, then you, and by the way, disappear where? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, yeah. that is one of the biggest issues of widowhood. It's yeah. like women are just supposed to go disappear. But I'm thinking to myself, well, where are, where do they go? Like. And, and, and that's a very good question. The other day, um, another male champion that I've also been trying to train on the side because I think he has authority and power. Uh, and so we've been discussing for long before I say, oh, we can introduce you as a male champion. And he asked me a, a very, he doesn't understand the context. So he said, why can't they just move away? Why can't the women just move away? So <laughs> we are in Kenya. We are not in the United States where you move from one, one, one city to the next city, to one location to another, and you find life. Yeah, you have no education. You have no skill. You have no inheritance. You have no property. You have children. You are living in, 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 with a virus and fighting another. How, where do you go? Where exactly can you go? Women belong to their we, women belong to their husbands. So you are supposed you can't go back to your parents, and you also have no peace where you are married. So it is it is there's no option. You have to st stick your neck out at whatever cost. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you're right because there's nowhere to go back to, or there's nowhere to for you to go forward. And so mm -hmm. th there is this displacement. 
So until, until he gets back on. So the work that you have been doing with mm -hmm. um, the power of having a commission, a police commissioner on your side, mm -hmm. which is a huge advantage. Um, like what, what's the experience been with working with him? Oh, Caroline, I, I wish I, and that's why we are mourning his transfer. I hope the next guy and I pray that he's as good. It felt like I was all along carrying this big burden of widows on my own. The, the policy, the laws, the police don't understand. They don't respond. The women report the cases and the cases, even if, even if you are sexually being, we have one case where a woman is being sexually abused by the son-in-law. Mm -hmm. And she reports, and it is recorded on the occurrence book, and nothing. No arrest, no reach out, no nothing. Nobody believes her. You know, I have this rule that believe the victim. Nobody believes the women. It is culture. She's supposed to be cleansed and inherited. So his coming on board broke that barrier. It sort of improved how the police have been responding. And um, oh, we're getting back. Yeah. So it's so he's been able to pave, open a door, basically, for people the door. to look into and say, you need yeah. to look at this again, right? He's and then improve the services offered to the, you know, the women are illiterate. You mm -hmm. are supposed to respond and record the cases in Kiswahili or English. Right. Lesana, I'm so sorry, connection. <laughs> okay, we, okay, we can see you now. Uh, Commissioner Cooley, you're really dark. How can we see your face? I, I, I'm concerned about the my internet. Okay. Oh, All right. what happened there? That's better. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We continued talking. And so I'm going to let Rosalind introduce you so we can ask you a few questions. It's, it's no, no worries. Okay, so... Police Commandant Francisco Oli is a police commandant in Kisi County, it used to be Sea County where we work and we also have widow chapters in Kisi County. So as he's been transferred, we mourn his loss, but we celebrate the widow square going, they are going to win a male champion. He's a peace builder, social change agent and founder of Peace Ambassador Kenya, working with more than 5,000 uh, youth across different counties in Kenya. He's passionate about police policing, peace building, and responsible youth citizenry. He's received a number of awards, amongst it National Police Building and two Distinguished Service Awards for exemplary community work from Policing uh, Oversight Authority. He, you are a celebrated man, sir. We are losing you to another county, and we are mourning as widows <laughs> your loss. And uh, I am hibernating from the community because you have moved. So welcome to this platform with Modern Widows Club and happy to have you. Thank you. So Francis, while you were gone, I found out that you were raised by a, a widowed mother. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, yeah. so I'm, I'm curious to find out how that impacted you and how you were open to um, understanding more about what those issues in in where you live right where you live well caro it is it is for those who went through it mm -hmm. that will understand the the environment of a widow yes mm. because what i know uh, since childhood a widow brought me up. Mm -hmm. The struggles they have been going through, it is me, the person who understands most. Mm -hmm. Sacrifices they give, yep. the little they give because of you, mm -hmm. to make you, to have you, to make you have enough sleep, to prepare you for tomorrow, mm -hmm. she has to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. She takes the responsibility of being a man and a woman. Mm. And she fits into that. It's something that I admired and, and realized that a widow is a name, mm. Mm. but a human in this person is a complete person mm. whose preparedness is just 
Immediately, if given an opportunity, she will take the community to the next level. You're so right. It is an opportunity that we need. For me, I saw her being given that opportunity, the respect she had in community that my dad had and people trusted her and Oh, you love them? He just froze. He just froze for a second. We, we yes. lost. Did we lose him? Uh, He's still you. on the call. We just can't. If you can hear uh, us, Francis, we, we, you're frozen. That's all. And that's the internet for sure. Yeah. I, I love, um, and I'm pretty sure what he's about to say about his dad and honoring his dad and being there for his mother. That is mm -hmm. such a universal human mm -hmm. uh, need and desire uh, mm -hmm. to continue that legacy. Mm -hmm. Okay, he just, he just fell off the call. But mm -hmm. wow, about saying widow is just a word because the, the mm -hmm. human being is a whole person. And mm -hmm. <laughs> What a powerful statement and mm. the, for, to hear him say, because that's really it. If you don't get that right, there, you don't there, will, get be, there will be no more uh, conversations mm. about this in the future. And, and this, mm. is, you know, this is why at MWC, we talk so much about women, women's mm. health, because mm. becoming widowed is a, is a transition of a woman's life mm. that is a crisis. It's a mm. crisis of the highest degree. Mm. And that's what, um, you know, and it's on all on different levels, mm. but, and, mm. it, and it's, mm. it's, it's emotional, mental, spiritual, mm. physical, mm. legal, mm. Uh, financial, mm. all of this, we know this. And here is a man who is a mm. commissioner who that, I knew, yeah. I knew that that experience of being with his yeah. mother yeah. and day to day to see that she is, she has pain, she has great sacrifices that she has made. You know why? Because he wouldn't be where he is right now having this conversation if his mother had not made those sacrifices. Yes, very true. And yeah. so when when they when a, a man or woman, and especially the one that stands up with the widow courses, if they don't get that bit of uh, the real true human being, uh, minus being a widow, yep. the conversation can't go on. You know, well, they, they, I loved what he said. He said, if a, if a widow is given an opportunity, she will take it and she will transform a community. That is exactly what's happened to every place in Modern Widows Club is, is raised up a community advocate. You, you are a perfect example. I mean, for someone to be mentored long distance, never have met in person, and then for seven years and then you meet in person, you know, eventually people realize, wow, there might be value in mm -hmm. these women that are just intact. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can build stronger communities and we can build stronger families and we can mm -hmm. build stronger partnerships mm -hmm. to understand human flourishing. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that word flourishing, it's, yeah. it's what, de what, what determines whether someone's flourishing or not. When you, when you don't have community, social yeah. support, how do you expect to flourish? Because it and, takes and first of all, and it's yeah. When you're broken, how do you heal? How do you begin the healing process? Because we, we, you and I say this of heal and thrive. How do you heal? You can't thrive if you don't heal. And so I think what uh, the mentorship and meeting uh, uh, the police commandant Francisco Oli, it shows me that when you heal and when you understand the issue deep down is, is when you can help others to heal and those others can then begin to thrive. And even that's when you can protect them. And it doesn't matter your position or power or authority or economic status. What matters is that I hear you, I see you, I recognize your pain, I know where you are at and I am standing alongside you. Yes, and so like when, when we talk about, let, let's just for the viewers, harmful traditional practices, um, you know, need to be legally addressed. And so 
I don't think most people understand even what that is, especially in first world countries like the United States. They don't under, even understand what I'm saying when I say those three words. So can you explain just shortly like what you and him are championing and, and protecting the, these women against um, what these practices are? Caroline, it's a very common question, like for sure, what is that? It's not even in the United States alone, even locally here, people who are elite and educated, they say, oh, you mean that happened? It's a very common <laughs> question. But also let a widow, a man die, a brother, a, an uncle die in their family, they will be at the forefront of practicing those sample traditional practices because people here live by their culture. It's either their culture of food, their culture of language, their culture of uh, knowledge, education. People belong to their culture be before they belong to their country. And okay. so our culture is a, a number of practices. How do people eat? We eat with our hands. We don't eat forks and spoons. We, we have burial ceremonies. We have elaborate burials. We have different ways of how a man is buried, a woman is buried. We have different ways when a daughter is born, our son is born. So these practices go on until death. So at death, a woman is supposed to be buried, mourned three days, a man is supposed to be mourned four days. And this goes post to their burial. What happens to the woman when she loses her husband? She's supposed to be sexually cleansed which is a real sexual intercourse with this woman by another strange man or a, a relative of the family to clean her off the omen of death. And so when this is done, she's clean. She then can be, uh, there's a practice called wife inheritance. And so she's supposed to be inherited to continue the name of this dead man, to maybe have children, to name after the dead man, to just, you know, to protect the woman, you know, the traditional, the original setup of wife uh, inheritance was meant to protect the widow. Then came HIV and AIDS and all the men died, you know, people of my generation, they are not there. So then they are now commercialized uh, sexual cleansing. And so the women sell their goods to be sexually cleansed, the women, and it's not done once. You have to do it at planting, you have to do it at repairing your house, marriage ceremony, burial ceremony. So it's an elaborate continuous process and it doesn't matter age. Originally, it was to be that when you are a, a widow who so are of a certain age beyond 55, I was widowed at 32. So we are talking about younger widows. I, I have widows in some of my groups who are 19, 20, who are uh, as a result of uh, what we call here border border accident is motorcycles. Mm -hmm. which is a very common means of transport. So these are young girls with small children who are being put through all this process because they are widowed. So if you don't look at how that continues the spread of HIV and AIDS, how that denies a woman dignity and uh, rights, how that devalues a human being, yes. what Francisco Oli calls the human inside, how that takes away the human inside, then you completely miss out the aspect of culture being a source of abuse, being the core source of abuse right. to over 8 million widows in this country. So it, we are talking it, about it, my vision. It blows it, my mind. Yeah, I mean, I, you, you've shared this so many times with me, it yeah. blows my mind that having mm -hmm. sexual intercourse in a violent way would mm -hmm. actually take the curse, the, the omen of this mm -hmm. love, this spouse, mm -hmm. this partner to, to exercise it from her body. I can't imagine someone having sex with me immediately after my husband mm -hmm. died. And mm -hmm. it, this is a person of not my choice mm -hmm. and I am forced. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm also put at the risk of getting AIDS because it mm -hmm. must be unprotected sex. Mm -hmm. This is one thing you, you didn't mention. I would yeah. be horrified, I would die inside. And what you're talking about, this per that what that is exactly what is happening to these women, even if you don't have words to explain what it is, you yeah. are being violated against your human rights. Yeah. You to have no not have your body invaded. Yeah. For a for you have no choice and voice over your own body. Right. Who right. Has sex with you. And now why this partnership with the police department is handy and important and very valuable and Locally now, our partnership is being considered a best practice 
because the wow. police are now right in the community. They're not waiting for the cases in the station. They are mm -hmm. in the community listening to these stories, listening to the issues of culture. Because all the issues, whether now these are sexual and gender based violence, if you look uh, holistically, mm -hmm. these are inequalities meted on the weaker woman. This is access to easy sex to these weaker women. But it is so culturalized that it will not be uh, seen as an abuse, as a gender issue, and as a rights issue. Because right, that so, is what, what, the what So, what has Commissioner Cooley done to change that? Um, with him stepping forward and in defending widows. What is, tell me a story that has- I think one case we have had is a, a case where now the, the cleanser and the turning inheritor came to burn a widow's home because now this man has helped you to build this home because you can't build a home without a man. And so this cleanser is, even if he doesn't have the money, even if Rona Foundation with Modern Widows Club are the ones sponsoring for you the home, there has to be a man figure to have sex on this day the house is built. He has to be there to eat the chicken, to do all these little ceremonies that happen in this context. So when this woman gets empowered, she joins a group and she gets empowered, and this is a true case, then she says, I made a wrong choice. I want to have my rights. I want to have my dignity. I, I want to make better choice. I know better. I want to do better. And so she says, I no longer want you. So the man says, no, I can't leave. I built the home. I live here. Remember, a, a cleanser and inheritor is not a husband. It's a husband figure. They are not supposed to provide for you. You are supposed to provide for them instead. So she says, no, it's too much. Even if I had a child with you out of this whole cleansing, I don't want you here. And so the man becomes violent, starts to beat her, one time threatened to rape her daughter. And then one day came and destroyed all the fruits in her compound, everything living and dead, broken windows. And then we report this case several times before this partnership with the police and nothing happens. And then we form this partnership and I invite this widow to just come and share her story. And then the police commandant, Mr. Francis Coley, seated there and said, this case is taken over. And in two days, three days later, this man is arrested. What happens in this case that when this man gets arrested, the police in charge who didn't attend this meeting release this man without even charging him. Right. And, and of course, we go back to the, him and this, we say, this man was said, give us time, we will find him. And then finally, this man is found and is uh, booked in and is charged. And uh, the case is ongoing. But this woman now finds peace and she begins to plant her crops and she begins to rebuild her home. And just today she called me and said, I'm taking my child, my son that I had with that man to school. This man refused that even the son say I cannot be shaved because this is like the child born out of this uh, cultural ceremony scaring this, it's, it's all myths and misconceptions. Yeah. So a woman like that, having a uh, police respond and they go to her home to assess the damage. And then she, oh, the law sees me. I am being protected. I am also a citizen. I am worthy. They, you know, and the whole of that case, as the assessment is done, the whole of that village begin to ask. So widows now have a voice. Widows now, the police can go to them. Let's be more careful around them. So it changes right. the narrative. Their presence alone changes the narrative. Okay. So well, and he's about he's coming back on. So hopefully we can. Mm -hmm. um, ask him kind of more of mm -hmm. what can be done. <laughs> no, 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 I'm disappointed. It's okay. It's okay. I, I'm disappointed. I may not be able to, to really give you what I have. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Why don't you tell us real quick, what more can people do um, to help widows um, that now you realize? Um, getting more involved in their stories? What would you suggest people do? Well, uh, it is the, 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 the realistic and sustainable structures. We are trying to put structures within the system where the, specifically the system from bottom up mm -hmm. is addresses those issues and put into curriculum of the National Police Service. 
the National Police Service has come up with the the National Police Service has come up with the, uh, the, 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 the structures in terms of addressing all sexual, all, all, all gender-based violence, uh, sexual offenses, and the widow issues all have been brought into one docket, gender desk. And, and, and under gender desk, that is where we, we are addressing all these issues and we've structured it. Uh, actually, uh, now we, we are introducing a system where one-stop shop for women issues and, and, and um, our officers train through partnering with organizations like Rona Foundation and other organizations that are actually uh, uh, that are fight for the rights of women, right. gender issues, and those special cases like widows because we realized under the system that um, in our system, we realized that most women are vulnerable, yes. especially on violence against women, sexual offenses against women, all this, uh, I may say the highest percentage is affecting women. Then as, as the law enforcement agencies, we are addressing the problem and that's why we are giving it priority because we are real we realize in terms of inheritance they are targeting to eliminate women right in terms of inheritance they come in the, in the pretext of being there good for women but the intention is to inherit yes. so we yeah. we come as police as husbands for widows <laughs> We are husbands for widows in terms of uh, uh, using legislations that are there husbands to stand and give women their voices. Yes, we want you. to be part of the voices of women to give mm. women power. Yes. We want women to take their power back. Mm. They gave their powers to the community and now we want to give them their power back so that they have the voice. Yes. By mm. actually supporting women's voice, mm. the community foundations become strong. Yes. So the only thing we are trying to adjust is uh, train our officers and mm. attach our officers to all organizations that actually agitate and fight for the women's rights mm. through various forums and the structures of various organizations. Mm. And that is why I came and as a leader in the entire county, I took a leading role so that my junior officers would follow it. Mm. I took a leading role in terms of showing them why it is important mm. to be proactive in fighting crime. Right. So if you want to be proactive, get into where the problem is, understand them, and, mm. and defend and protect. Mm. But you cannot protect that which you don't understand. Mm. Until right. when you get there, be, be taught about it, mm. be acquainted with the softwares of women, mm. because the police are there all the time for them, but they lack information. Yes. Mm. The other thing we are addressing is the fear of women, the fear of police. Mm. Women fear police. Mm. So we are bridging the gap mm. to wow. let to win the confidence of women. Mm. We are working on the trust mm. for the women to trust the police with the information, mm. with their safety, Mm. And all that affected them. Mm. We realized that uh, women don't trust some of us. Mm. But we were trying to build their confidence and win their trust. Mm. You can only win their trust if you've won some cases for women. Yeah. And that's what I've been <laughs> That's right. You, that's no right. Trust. Women want you to prove that you, you're meant to be trusted. <laughs> Unless you are trusted, 
then you you won't qualify to be trusted. So the only thing I did to win Rosalind and her team was actually to win some cases and take people to court. Yes. Nice. That's when she started now trusting me. Yes. And the other thing is giving them feedback. They love feedback. <laughs> giving them feedback. They love feedback. And all the time being there for them, response must be very fast, effective in their cases. And the other thing is they need to work with the police whenever they go to meetings. Mm. We've, we've, we've tested this. Mm. Whenever Rosalind's team go for the field, um, for the capacity building with the police, mm. the communities actually, um, those men, fear those women who work with the police. Mm. Mm. In fact, in fact, mm. those ones we supported, mm. they have turned to be leaders and, and the, the community bring problems to them, to solve mm. for them. Mm -hmm. This is true. Mm -hmm. They have become a solution to the community. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. we realize if you want to minimize crimes in the community, mm -hmm. just support a woman and you are done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, so and, and the match we've done is actually for me, uh Carol. I have I have been for the community for my entire life. Mm -hmm. I have worked for uh, 1,600 kilometers trekking, mm. at least supporting the community. Yeah. I did a walk for blood donation. I did a walk for peace for nine mm. days, walking, sleeping, spending nights and what? Wow. Anything mm. that affects the community. I put my, my heart for policing away and address issues for the communities. Mm. And the other thing I wanted to mention is, mm -hmm. we do things, for me, I do things willingly, mm. not out of obligation, mm. not mm. out of obligation. I do it willingly because that is the only sustainable thing. <laughs> that is the only sustainable thing you can have for many years. Mm. Wow. Yes, and but you can't fake mm -hmm. something that didn't come mm -hmm. for women, whether in CIA, I mm -hmm. am for their rights. I will stand for them despite the distance. Mm -hmm. I, I am going to orient my colleagues mm -hmm. wherever I go to make sure this voice mm -hmm. of women is raised up to give them power they need thank you <laughs> thank wow. you i mean wow. it's we need more men and more champions like you commissioner cooley really because it's you know talking about trusting people going out not in your official capacity mm -hmm. but actually being willing to be a human caring mm -hmm. for other humans who are uh experiencing injustices that is that is at the heart of the issue, right? Looking at people who um, are being mistreated and giving them that voice. I all I can say is your mother must be very proud of the work that you are doing, um, <laughs> and and your father um, must be extremely proud of you in standing up for not only your mother but literally millions of other women and influencing other people to do that. So thank you so much. I, I know our time is limited here, but I'm so glad you got to come back on and really show everyone how powerful you are uh, and just the passion that you have, because that's really what we were hoping for. So um, I want to thank you so much for coming back and being so diligent. And thank you, Rosalind. Um, thank you. We will, we can continue this conversation, but I'm just so glad that we could share it with our Modern Widows Club community and our international outreach and advocacy that is being created. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adeline. Thank you. Thank you.